Now, let's add a product page to our Chico's Cheese Bike site. For each product, we'll display its name, price, rating, and an image. Our product page will also let us filter out the list of products by category. For example, we could show only bikes or helmets or gloves. We'll also let users sort this list of products in order of price, either ascending or descending. So how might we implement this product page? Well, based on what we've learned so far in these courses, we might just want to use HTML, CSS, and AMP components to represent a product, and then duplicate that code for each product the company sells. While this approach would work, there are some significant drawbacks. First, product information changes, and every time that happened, we'd need to update our HTML and republish it to the web. There's also no easy way to filter or sort products. Last, but certainly not least, we'd be duplicating a lot of code, and that's never a good practice. So how does AMP help us work around these issues? For our proper AMP solution, we'll take all the product information out of our website code and maintain it on a server, independent from our site. When our site first loads, we'll contact the server, download the product data, and then display that data in a consistent way. In our site code, we use HTML, CSS, and AMP components to define a template that describes how a single product looks on our site. When the server data arrives, then we can apply the information about each product to our template, which produces HTML that AMP displays on our site. So then to filter or sort our products, we'll just request filtered or sorted data from the server. And then we'll apply the new batch of data to our templates to produce different HTML and display it on the screen in place of the original. In AMP, we use the AMP list component to retrieve data from the server and display it on the screen. We'll also use the AMP mustache templates we first learned about in the intermediate course. Before we dive into how to retrieve server data with AMP, let's take a moment to discuss how servers provide the data we're after. Some servers host an application programming interface, commonly known as an API, that can be accessed via endpoints. Each endpoint is addressed with a unique URL and returns a different collection of data. Another way to think about how servers work is to think of the server as a file cabinet, where the API collectively represents all the folders in the cabinet. Each endpoint represents an individual folder in the file cabinet, and the URLs are the labels on the folders. The URLs help us locate the folders easily and retrieve the files. Of course, the files within each folder represent the data that the server returns. Each folder has different files, just as each endpoint returns different data. We'll retrieve and display server data using the AMP list component. The AMP list component accepts a URL as the source attribute, and then it retrieves JSON from the API endpoint at that URL. The AMP list component is associated with an AMP mustache template. Each piece of server data retrieved will be applied to the AMP mustache template, and this generates a fragment of HTML. All of the HTML generated from combining the server data and templates is added to the page. As an example, the code shown here is going to retrieve a list of names from the endpoint and then display them on a page as a collection of paragraph tags. This sample of JSON is an example of what the data from the previous example might have looked like when it came back from the server. By default, our AMP list expects the server to respond with a JSON object that contains a property named items. Items is an array of objects to apply to the template and display on the screen. Remember how our paragraph tags in the last example referenced the name variable? The variables we use in our mustache templates refer to data in each item in the items array. We don't have to reference them into the array. The structure of the server data looks similar to the sample data shown here. The templates we'll be using with the AMP list are the AMP mustache templates. We covered the AMP mustache templates in the intermediate course. And we use them, if you remember, to display a confirmation message when the user signed up for our newsletter. So let's do a quick review of the AMP mustache templates. The variable names included in the mustache templates are surrounded by double curly braces. These variables are replaced by the data from the server before being displayed on the screen. The variables in a mustache template refer to the properties of each item in the list of data received by the server. So for example, the mustache variable name refers to the name property of each object returned from the server. Mustache variables can appear as content inside of tags, such as the text of a paragraph tag, or they can appear inside of attributes, such as the source attribute of an AMP image component. 
Like all other AMP components, AMP list must declare its size in advance. The size must include the space needed to display all of the data from the server. We do this using the layout attribute. If the data returned from the server cannot be displayed in the available space, AMP will try to allocate additional space. But if there's no space left, then your list will be cut off or flow over the top of other page content. Either way, it won't be a good experience for your users. A useful tip. If AMP list is the last thing on your page, it is more likely that AMP will be able to allocate additional space and allow the AMP list to expand. When you aren't sure how much space your list will need, try to make it the last thing on your page. Requests to a server take time, and sometimes they fail. But what we want to do is make sure to display something that indicates our requests are still pending, like a loading indicator, or display an informative error message when our requests fail. To enable us to display notifications and error messages, AMP provides the placeholder and fallback attributes. Adding the placeholder attribute to a child of an AMP list causes the child element to appear on the page only when data is being retrieved from the server. Similarly, children of the AMP list with a fallback attribute appear only after an error retrieving data from the server. This code shows an example of using the placeholder and fallback attributes with AMP list. In this example, while users are waiting for data from the server, the div tag containing the message loading displays. Once the data arrives, this placeholder div is replaced by the HTML generated from the server data and templates. If the request for data either did not return within a predefined time period, or it returned with an error code, the AMP list displays the element with the fallback attribute. In this case, it will display a div tag with the message failed to load data.